In this video, we're going to take a closer look at specific electrons that are in orbitals using quantum numbers and thinking about how we can use those quantum numbers to really describe electrons. And we talked in the last video about electrons in hydrogen in a lot of detail. It turns out that pretty much all that information carries over to thinking about many electron atoms. The main difference is that the hydrogen atom, we can solve the Schrodinger equation exactly. In many electron atoms, it's technically an approximation, but it turns out to be a very good approximation in that it really helps us understand how things react and how chemistry works. The main difference between hydrogen and many electron atoms is that the energy levels end up splitting differently. And the energy is going to increase for many electron elements with both N and L. In hydrogen, only N is required to describe the energy level. In many electron atoms, we need both N and L. We'll talk more about why this is the case in future videos. For the purposes of this video, we're really just gonna think about the orbital shapes and how we fill them up with electrons. And so in that case, we don't need to worry too much about the difference because the orbital shapes are gonna be the same. One thing we do need to take into consideration though with many electron elements is that we have more than one electron. And so what we need is this Pauli exclusion principle, which tells us that every electron in an atom has to have a unique set of quantum numbers. That means we have to be able to describe every electron individually. And because we can actually put two electrons in every orbital that we've talked about so far, we need to also consider a fourth quantum number, which is gonna to correspond to electron spin. The effect of this is that the number of orbitals has a maximum number of electrons that we can put in it. So for S orbitals, there was one possible orbital. That one can only hold two electrons. In a p orbital, we had three orbitals. Those correspond to the different values of m sub l, and therefore we can put six electrons in those orbitals. For the d electrons, we had five, which means they can each hold 10. And for the f electrons, we have seven, so they can each hold 14. In order to distinguish which electron we're talking about, we need to be able to talk about its spin. And the spin is really an intrinsic property of electrons. It helps sometimes to think of it like, like a top spinning, but that's not really quite accurate. It, it's just a property that it has. And there's only two possible values of the spin. It's either going to be spin up or spin down. And we designate those with a quantum number called m sub s, which has a value of either plus a half if it's spin up or minus a half if it's spin down. To summarize what we've really said about atomic orbitals so far, is that these are regions of high probability of finding an electron. So they tell us about the shape and location of the electrons around a nucleus. The orbitals themselves are described by three different quantum numbers, the n, the l, and the m sub l. n described the energy and size of the orbital, and it starts at one and counts up. The shape is described by the quantum number l, which starts at zero and goes up to n minus one. That also gets an alternate letter designation of S, P, D, or F. The orientation is sort of which of those specific orbitals you have. Is it pointing along the x-axis, the y-axis, or the z-axis? Um, and so it goes from zero to plus or minus L. So basically for a P orbital, which has L equal one, it's gonna be minus one, zero, or one. And based on the Pauli principle, we know that each electron has to have a unique set of quantum numbers which means that every orbital can hold at most two electrons. And so to be able to identify the individual electrons, we have to add in a fourth quantum number, which designates the electron spin. And that spin is going to be either plus a half or minus a half. So let's look at how this would apply to the helium quantum numbers. So in helium, we have two electrons. Both of those are going to fit into a 1s orbital in their ground state. And so we can identify four quantum numbers belonging to each of these electrons. Because they're in a 1s orbital, n is going to be 1. That's coming from this value. s means that l is going to be equal to 0. So remember, the letter designation is just an alternate designation for the quantum number. So both electrons have the same value of n and l, 
they also have the same value of m sub l because if l equals zero, there's only one possible m sub l value. And then finally, in order to distinguish between them, we have to consider their spin and we have one that spin up. So that would correspond to the plus one half electron and then one that spin down, which would be the minus one half electron. And so both electrons in helium can be designated with four separate quantum numbers. So at this point, it would be a good idea to pause the video and take some time to do the practice problems on the following slides before you watch the solutions. For this first problem, we want to be able to identify the quantum numbers corresponding to the indicated electrons. Assuming you have paused the video and given this a try, let's go ahead and discuss the answer. So the quantum numbers that we need to worry about are n, l, m sub l, and m sub s to define the electron specifically. N is just gonna come from the quantum, the principal quantum number here, so N is two. In this case, L is equal to P, which means that the numerical value is gonna be one. So that comes from the, the P orbital. If L is equal to one, M sub L can be negative one, zero, or one, which is what's indicated here. And it's, typical that it starts at the lowest value and goes up to the highest value. So if we're looking at an electron in the middle here, m sub l is going to be zero, and m sub s indicates the spin. This one's pointing down, so we would give it an m sub s of negative one half. In the second case, now our principal quantum number n is given by three. L is going to be from an s orbital, which means that it's equal to zero. With the s orbital, there's only one possible value of m sub l. It also has to be zero. And in this case, we've highlighted the spin up electron. So m sub s is gonna be positive one half. For this next problem, we wanna think about how many electrons we can fit into some different levels. So again, pause the video and give yourself a minute to think about this before watching for the solution. If we're looking at how many electrons we can fit into orbitals, we need to know how many levels are available. So the first thing we wanna think about is the L value. The L value is gonna tell us how many levels there are through the formula 2L plus one, or by thinking about the possible values of M sub L. So for L is equal to two, M sub L can go from minus two to two. So either way we think about it, we should come to the conclusion that there are five states available here, which would correspond to a d orbital. And in this case, it would actually be a 4d orbital because n is specified as four. And so there's five states. Each of those can hold two electrons, which means we would have a total of 10 electrons that could fit into a 4d orbital. In the second part of the question, we now wanna know how many electrons can fit into orbitals with just n equals four. And so in this case, we need to consider all the possible values of L as well as all the possible values of M sub L. So if n is equal to four, L can have values of zero, one, two, or three. It stops at n minus one. The zero L value corresponds to the S orbital, there's only one possible value there, one state with m sub l equals zero. When l is equal to one, we have a p orbital. There's gonna be three states for the p orbital with m sub l equal to negative one, zero, or positive one. When n is equal to two, we have a d state, and now we have five possible levels, as we just discussed in the first part of the problem. And when it's equal to three, we have an f state, which corresponds to seven possible levels, going from m sub l is negative three all the way up to m sub l equal to positive three. So if I can fit two electrons in each of these levels, I could fit a total of two plus six plus 10 
plus 14 electrons into all of these states that I've just listed out here. So this works out to be 18 plus 14 is 32. So I can have a total of 32 electrons into states with n equal to four. For this last practice problem, you're asked to give the subshells. So that basically corresponds to the n and l values corresponding to each of the following orbitals. These are given in various representations you may encounter. Remember that orbitals are actually a probability, and so they're not hard surfaces, even though they're often depicted as hard surfaces. Assuming you've given them a minute to try and solve these, let's go ahead and talk about them. So n is the principal quantum number, and l is the angular quantum number. l is going to correspond to the number of angular nodes in the orbital, which are basically the planes that we can split in the atoms. So in this first case, we have one plane where we can divide our atom and it changes sign going from one side to the other. And so that means that L is gonna to have to be equal to one or it's a P orbital, which again is the peanut shaped one. N has to account for the total overall size and number of nodes. So if you remember from the previous video, the total number of nodes is related to the energy and that's gonna be N minus one. So here we have one node, that's the only node in this system. And so N is gonna to have to be equal to two. In this next case, I have three planes basically where I can split the atom and have it change signs. That tells me that L has to be equal to three, which also corresponds to an F orbital. Again, there's no other nodes in this system. So my total nodes is gonna be equal to three, which means that N has to be equal to four. In this next case, we have more of a probability distribution and there's no angular nodes. There's nowhere that I can kind of draw a line and split this atom. However, if I start at the center and go out, I do have a series of radial nodes, which is where it basically changes color or changes sign going out. So there's one here and two here. So here I have L is equal to zero because there's no angular nodes, it's an S orbital. And then I have two radial nodes. So my total number of nodes is two and that's equal to N minus one, which means that N is gonna be equal to three. In this next case, we have something that looks sort of like a P orbital, but actually it's the same sign on both sides. I can't just draw a line through the middle. What I have here are the conical nodes. So they come into the center and then go out and this happens when you have a d orbital. So a d orbital has L equal to two. There's two of these sort of conical nodes. I also again have no radial nodes. There's no point where if I start at the center and go out, it's gonna change sign. And so my total nodes is still two. I would say that N is equal to three. So in this next case, I have two nodes. One is vertical, one is horizontal. They're splitting the atom. Um, again, that's going to tell me that L is equal to two. And again, there's no node, if I went from the center and went out, there's no point where it changes sign. So my N is just going to also be equal to three. So these are actually from the same principal energy level as well as the same subshell. They do have different values of M sub L. And you weren't asked to identify which value um, and generally, we're not going to worry about that for, for purposes of Chem 1A. In this final example, we have an orbital where we have one planar node that where we can split the atom and it changes sign on the other side of that. It's actually the plane here. Um, and then if we start at the center, we also see that it's changing sign. So the one planar node tells us that we have L equal to one. So that's gonna again be a P orbital, but now it's also changing sign as we go out from the center. So here we have one sign change and two sign changes. And so the total number of nodes is gonna be two plus one, and that's gonna equal N minus one. That's our total nodes. And so N in this case is actually gonna be equal to four. 
So we've gone through and labeled these based on all their quantum numbers. It could also have labeled them just based on their subshell designation of the number for the principal quantum number and letter. So this first one would be a 2p orbital. And then we have a 4f orbital, a 3s orbital, a 3d orbital, and another 3d orbital. And then finally, we have a 4p orbital. That's where we're going to wrap up this video. I hope that you learned some interesting things about the orbital shapes in how we assign quantum numbers for individual electrons.